you are listening to Fanfare Tracks. You're listening to Fanfare Tracks. Flip through the galaxy of literature. Welcome to Cannon Fodder. Here is your host, Mark Nubo. You're listening to Cannon Fodder, and a very special episode as we welcome to the show author John Jackson Miller. John is with us to discuss his latest novel, The Living Force, his first for nearly 10 years. We talk all things Living Force and much, much more on this very special episode of Cannon Fodder. Welcome, John. It's good to see you again. Glad to be here. It's been about, wow, it's been about 10 years since a new dawn. So what have you been up to? Well, I, I haven't been completely away from the galaxy. I, uh, I've been uh, doing short stories and I uh, did a novella for uh, the Canto Bite uh, book that came out in uh, 2017. I uh, did a, uh, a, a short stories for both of the uh, Certain Point of View books, uh, Star Wars and Empire. Uh, even did a, a comic book uh, annual for uh, Star Wars Adventures over at IDW. Uh, but certainly for the most part, uh, I have been writing uh, novels uh, for Star Trek. I did uh, four novels uh, before the streaming era started and then four uh, that tie in with the streaming uh, series books, uh, including uh, two Discovery era novels, uh, uh, Enterprise War and Die Standing, uh, a Picard novel, Rogue Elements, and uh, my most recent book, which uh, just uh, came out in paperback, uh, which is St- Strange New Worlds, The High Country. Uh, and uh, you know, literally the day that that book uh, came out, uh, I got uh, the offer from uh, Random House uh, and my editor, Tom Holler. Uh, you know, we'd been looking for you know, a project for me to do that both, uh, you know, fit my time uh, schedule and and theirs and something that I would probably be suited for. And he said, would you like to do a, a novel about the uh, the Jedi Council? Uh, and I said, yeah, I have an idea, in fact. So when you when you get the opportunity to dive into this era, because it's a fascinating era, not just as a writer, but just for the galaxy in general, it, yeah, pre-episode one, all the things that are happening, everything that ties in and leads up to Phantom Menace, which, of course, is kind of what Leslie Headland's doing with the Acolytes. She's kind of seeding things. It feels like this very nicely fits into that flow. What is it about yeah. this era you think that that works so well for writers to really get their teeth into, which you clearly do in this book? Uh, well, it's uh, this is a part of the timeline I haven't worked in before. I haven't done anything for the prequels. Uh, and, you know, what we know about it is, uh, you know, there's this event that's going to come along uh, and uh, it's going to end badly for everyone. Uh, All these sorrows are coming up, Uh, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, The Jedi are not quite um, aware of what is happening uh, with regard to uh, Palpatine, certainly, Uh, but they are aware that um, they're increasingly being distracted from what they would prefer to be doing. Uh, they uh, you know, are focused so much on the distant future. They're focused so much on the distant reaches of the galaxy, the big picture. Um, and they're also being bogged down by uh, these little uh, demands that are coming from the Republic and the Senate, <laughs> excuse me, and uh, and also Palpatine uh, is is obviously, you know, in the middle of that. Uh, they realize that they are absolutely, uh, you know, missing, uh, the ball. They're, they're missing the, uh, the, the point of what they should be doing. Uh, and, uh, it felt to me like this was the right time a year before the Phantom Menace and Qui-Gon Jinn was the right person, uh, to be able to say, yeah, hi, let's, uh, let's, Get out of uh, the Jedi Council chamber, you folks, uh, and try to get something done. It feels very much Qui Gon always seems like the guy that, if he'd stuck around, would have had a massive influence and difference. He would have been a difference maker in the galaxy, but he wasn't around after Phantom Menace. So to pin so much of the the seeds of this story to him seemed like a very smart move. But by the same token, for such a key character, he's not in it a huge amount. You're focusing on lots of different characters and with some fantastic interpersonal relationships without going too deep into it. Which of those relationships did you enjoy writing the most? 
Uh, well, there were a whole lot of different ones. Uh, and uh, you know, one of the things that I uh, tried to capture was, even though that this is the first time that we actually see or hear some characters talk, um, you know, uh, your real poof has never officially spoken before uh, that I'm aware of, uh, you know, outside of Robot Chicken, which was not really official. <laughs> it, 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 you know, it, uh, it struck me that, um, you know, we would be, uh, meeting these characters at a point where they will have known one another for a long time, uh, sometimes for years, sometimes for centuries. And so, you know, the uh, the connections that we see between them are very much, uh, you know, it, it, it very much uh, a story in progress. Uh, so uh, when, for example, one of the favorite uh, pairings in the book, uh, you'll see uh, Plo Koon and uh, Stacey Tin. Uh, clearly, these people have known each other for a very long time. Uh, Ural Poof and Kiani Mundi, likewise. Uh, some of the characters have known each other for a very long time. Uh, you know, Upa, Upa Rancisis and Ural Poof have both been around for hundreds of years. Uh, but then there are, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> excuse me, sorry, it's allergy season here in Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, we also have uh, uh, you know, characters like uh, Yoda, who uh, is, uh, you know, in, in his sequences, uh, we see him with Adi Gallia, who is much younger, much newer. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have a, a sort of an imbalance in their relationship that I'm trying to portray uh, because she has been taking off of him uh, all of these uh, you know, different bureaucratic duties. Uh, and none of it is making her a better Jedi uh, or a better master. There's a look, I won't say who says it, and I don't want to give anything away, but it absolutely stuck with me where a character, and readers will get to it, says, I, I, I'm I, paraphrasing, I'd rather put the emphasis on the Jedi than the Order, which really stuck out to me. <laughs> Obviously, you know what I'm talking about. So to, to be able to take these characters from Coruscant, and you mentioned Palpatine, and there's definitely some politicking going on there. You can see it very clearly. Why, why take them to Quen? Why take them to somewhere? It's out in the slice. It's it's is it a new world? Is it a completely new creation? Uh, not planet? completely new. Uh, it, it had been written about many times before with regard to its space station, but I realized we had not gone to the planet. Right. Why choose that location? Well, that was part of the appeal of it. We had not gone to that planet. Uh, it was it, it was open for me to you know uh, you know create uh, a world that. You know, we depict in the book, uh, yes. you know, there's a map in every edition. Uh, in the United States, there's actually a color map in the uh, the Barnes & Noble edition, which I wish we could get for everybody else. Oh, very uh, nice. and, and, it's, and it's also available in the um, uh, the ebook and, and the audio book as a supplemental download. Uh, I wanted to be able to take this planet and show that it was uh, created as, uh, not created, but it was, it was um, restored as a showpiece for uh, the High Republic at the height of their uh, influence, at the height of their ambition. Uh, and I wanted to show how that had had sort of decayed, uh, how that had sort of, uh, you know, the fact that they had been absent landlords or absent, uh, just absent Jedi. Yeah. You know, what, what influence that had. And um, you know, the particular location was also uh, chosen on purpose because I wanted it to be on a trade route Heading from the center of the galaxy out to hut space. Yeah. Uh, so it was um, a place that was going to be under pressure, under threat, uh, if the there was a power vacuum, if the Jedi left, uh, and uh, and if the Republic pulled back, uh, you know, its assets, and uh, and so it all came together nicely. I mean, I uh, I suppose it could have been a different planet. I did look at other planets. Uh, but this particular one, um, you know, was uh, well known enough and yet unknown enough that it fit my uh, requirements. Hi, this is George Mann, and you're listening to Fanta Tracks. It's beautifully realised when you get to the, you as a reader get to the planet. You can see from the way it's described, it's had its pomp, it's had its day, the great renewal. It's it's it was clearly yeah. a project that certain Jedi took pride in, and now they come to it when it's on the downslide. It does very much yeah. play into almost what Shmi says in Phantom about how the Republic doesn't really bother about us. It feels like it's just far enough out that it's on that periphery. 
Uh, yeah, I mean the, the the republic. It's not the republic's job to you know shore up these old planets. No, uh, it's uh, it, you know the it, the the uh, the the Jedi uh, were the ones who brought everybody there to begin with uh, to try to clean it up. Uh, and uh, if they're not around, um, you know, and they're not providing the leadership to others, and in fact, that's that's I think a, a key as well because it, it is not simply that the Jedi did all this. The Jedi led others to do all this. Yeah. And and this is one of those things about the living force uh, and what Qui-Gon is saying. Yeah, he doesn't really feel like the Jedi are providing much in the way of leadership to the people. It's kind of before the unification of church and state, if you want to put it that way. There is a mention of the Republic having an army and I think it's Mace was, no, 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 that's not what we yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's that, that sort of preloading of that it feels right. like it sits because it's so close to Phantom. Of course, it's it's that prequel era storyline. But as you say, all the seeds of it being in the High Republic. So was it interesting for you being able to seed all these things coming forward as well as preload what's right ahead of us? Well, we know what's what's happening, and uh, you know we have to show a a, a place where it is. Yeah, it's ripe for the kind of trouble that the Trade Federation makes. Uh, we have to show a kind of republic that people would want to leave. Um, yeah. You know, it is the case in my later writings uh, with uh, with Ray Sloan, uh, the uh, the uh, Imperial Captain. Uh, you know, she is not evil. Uh, you know, in in my writings, anyway, uh, she uh, is a believer in the Empire as a response to how the Republic got things wrong. And she is from a planet where the Republic got things wrong. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I think that uh, clearly the Republic is, is um, you know, it, you know, the Senate is, uh, is corrupt. We already knew that uh, they're, they're, you know, trying to pull uh, people's attentions away from, uh, from uh, necessarily worthier places towards, uh, you know, places where they just want to exercise power and influence and reward people. Um, you know, it's uh, it's not a it's not a new kind of story necessarily, but it is a new uh, place in the timeline for me to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I mentioned, you've got some great relationships in here, and everybody everybody gets a moment. So without without giving too much away, was there a moment as you were writing that you thought, you know, this one could just stick in people's minds? Uh, you know, there's just several. I mean, there are several, and uh, you know, I, you know, Tom uh, Holler, my editor, at one point, uh, you know, noted online that uh, there was one character that uh, everybody was uh, you know, responding to him about while they were they were reviewing it, uh, and and uh, it would probably not be the one that I thought it was, <laughs> and I still don't know who it was. Um, no, I I I will I will say that. Um, you know, I I really since I had so many different subplots that I could tell, uh, you know, I tried to tell a variety of comedic and dramatic ones uh, that that people would uh, would enjoy. Um, you know, I I personally, you know, I, I'm a comedy writer, uh, you know, in reality, so I I prefer uh, you know some of the some of the more anic uh, or comedic sequences that are on the planet. Uh, but then I also uh, I really liked uh, as you were speaking the the you know the uh, the sort of the birth of the Republic Navy stuff that Mace Windu was involved with yeah um, you know that is I know I've got a kind of reader that is is just going to absolutely uh, devour that uh, because uh, and, and that is and, and the captain in that situation is a character that I have written before as well and although I urge people not to read his first appearance before this book because it's a, <laughs> it's a it uh, it it's set much later and his character was fantastic fun uh, I'm listening to the audiobook Mark Thompson does an absolutely fantastic job of uh, of bringing that out I, so I can't wait to hear it I haven't heard it yet it's fantastic you also and again I don't want to give it away but there is a cameo from a very young character that we do see way, way, way later on. Yes, um, yes. What instigated that? Was it just? Was it just his age? That was kind of that was or? me. Uh, that was me, and that was uh, that was. I I looked up the age of the character, and I wanted a character of name to sell the um, the uh, the importance of the commanding officer involved. Um, you know, it is it is not. 
and I and and as I took it upstairs, I said, "This is not fan service. Um, this is exactly the sort of person uh, who would be, uh, you know, recruited by um, uh, by this uh, this person, and you know that 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 we're talking about uh, his commanding officer. Uh, you know, this is this is this is a ship that is full of." Um, you know, the, 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 uh, the children of the, of the wealthy, the children of the well-to-do, the, the, you know, the second sons, so to speak, that are, yeah. you know, not going to be inheriting anything. So they end up having to go into, um, military or, or, or something else. Uh, and, uh, and it, you know, I realized that the years were right and, uh, and, I, uh, you know, set it up the flagpole and Lucasfilm said, uh, yeah, we're here for it because it's it is not uh, gratuitous uh, at all. It is uh, it entirely, I think, um, you know, underscores uh, the the important figure that this commanding officer uh, will be one day. And we will see that for everything in one location. Daily news, reviews, interviews, podcasts, video and social media feeds. Bookmark Fanthatracks.com for Star Wars news 24-7, 365. I look back and realize that the first time that I interviewed you was on my old site lightsaber back in 2006. Um, back then. Wow. Yeah, I know. Uh, back then, oh, wow. I think I think you just, if I remember, you just started your run on Knights of the Old Republic, or, or it was, right. it was a, a little way in. We spoke to Tom Hola just to say very recently on the show. It's fascinating hearing how an editor, what they do and how that works, and what right. they bring to the show. As a writer, you started out obviously you'd done all your pre Star Wars stuff, and then started on you did uh, Star Wars Empire issue thirty five, I think, and then right. Knights of the Old Republic followed that. Plotting out a, a long, you did 50 issues of that. So plotting out that long arc in Knights of the Old Republic, which is such a fan favourite. What are the differences in between plotting out a long arc in a comic book storyline, which I guess has to sort of bunny hop storylines to a certain degree, and plotting yeah. out a novel like this, which has got a lot of moving parts, but it is a finite, concise thing? Well, that is that is the that is exactly it. The novel um, you know, is, is sketched out from the beginning. Uh, we had no conception at the beginning of Knights of the Old Republic that it was going to run five years. Yeah. Uh, and so all along, I was having to tack like a sailing ship uh, towards this thing or that thing based on, you know, the artist changing or, uh, you know, Dark Horse having a specific need, like the Vector storyline yes. that was not my idea to begin with, uh, but that I participated in the creation of. Um, and, and, you know, uh, Dark Horse then wanting to, uh, resolve the, uh, fugitive storyline earlier than I would have intended to, uh, as a means of showing that the Vector storyline had, uh, uh, impact. Um, and so, you know, I'm constantly re, you know, moving around elements that I will do in a novel. I will take an outline and I will, um... Yeah, either reverse the order of events that are going to take place um, or discard them entirely. Uh, but uh, in large measure, uh, you know, I don't uh, I don't go completely uh, off in, uh, in a brand new direction. Uh, so that that is a difference um, in particular. Uh, you know, the living force has this challenge of so many different characters in it. Uh, I had to kind of engineer the book. Um, so that uh, you know, every character got a minimum number of pages, uh, and that involves sitting with a spreadsheet and and basically moving around uh, the parts uh, and then interlacing them properly. Because if you'll see in that second section, um, we go to space and then we go to the planet, and we go to space, then we go to the planet, and you know, I needed to make sure that we got back with certain characters, uh, you know, in a reasonable enough time frame that we remembered what they were doing. <laughs> yeah, there, there is, as I say, there's a, there's a lot going on. You've set a lot of, it feels like, not just in terms of plot, but in terms of location, you, setting it where you've set it, setting up the gangs that are involved, and there's, again, oh, yeah. there's a, a lot going on there. Does it feel to you, and of course, you're a writer, you're not going to say no to this, but if somebody said, if Tom says, wow, this book's been a smash, 
do you want to do more? Is there more you could do with this? Not just the characters, of course, but oh, with the locations. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, always. I mean, you know, clearly this is a particular. Um, you know, this is a complete story. Uh, it, it is. It is a, a single episode. Um, uh, but uh, you know, there there are. Um, there's a lot of meat in here, <laughs> and so uh, you know, we we uh, you know, I I created. Uh, you know, not just one, but five different pirate factions that, yes. you know, were, were active, not just on this one planet, but other places. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and writing the dynamics of all of those. Uh, no, there are, there are certainly other stories that can be told, but that's the case with all of the Star Wars stuff. Of course. Do you enjoy the minutiae in that sense? You know, not just setting out the characters and where they're going to go. You just explain moving it around, making it all fit. Yeah. But also... As you say, the location and the constituent parts is that as interesting in a way as yeah, writing it? Yeah, it, it, it is. I I know that I need to actually do it to make it uh, 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 feel real and credible. Um, you know, if it had just been, for example, the Rift Walkers and four random pirate outfits that were free of personality, uh, that would uh, that would not be as interesting. Uh, but you know, we we kind of have uh, you know the 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 notion the notion that you know the vile are just you know, horrible people. We have the notion that the poison blades are are these backstabbers. We have the notion that uh, you know the uh, the the filthy credits uh, the uh, are uh, you know business suit wearing uh, uh, thieves. Yeah, uh, yeah. We we have uh, we have the staved skulls who are, are basically our biker gang. Um, and, and, you know, as we see these, uh, other groups and we only look in on them a little bit, um, we can keep them straight. Uh, yeah. and again, that is part of the challenge with all this, uh, is, um, you know, I, I, I structured the book also as well so that, um, we don't visit Quen until the second act. Um, the first act is all about, let's meet our 12 Jedi. Um, and um, and the villain, and you know, not get into uh, you know the the uh, uh, the additional description of detail that talking seriously about Quen would entail. We know that it's important, but we don't know more than that. And I don't know if it's ever happened that that all of the council, I mean, not just in literature, but in any sort of Star Wars written stuff, all the council are out there doing stuff together. It it does. Yep. I know. I know. There's men and women in that in that group but it feels like a boys on tour thing it's got that vibe about it and also the fact that they don't let coruscant know that that they oh, yeah. don't let you know they're just often doing their thing yeah and uh and you know it, it is the first such story um i remember back in the knights of the old republic days back in that first year where we had uh you know an appearance of the jedi council uh in uh, issue nine, uh, a magazine that's now quite dear because uh, people are, are are it's got Revan in it, and so it's it's yeah. five hundred dollars. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's 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 crazy. Um, but I was getting messages from people saying, "Is this person on the council? Is this person on the council? Is this person on the council?" And I didn't have the slightest idea. Uh, I only knew the ones of name that that you know were in the video game, and um, you know, I, I, and I was really. Uh, you uh, people that expected that there was this colossal backstory for everybody, uh, it it didn't exist. Well, when I approached this, uh, there was a backstory for some characters and there was not for some, and I just had to figure out which was which. And has that given you immense pleasure being able to bring a voice to somebody like your Al Poof that's never spoke before? Uh, it, it, it was fun, and uh, you know that's that's probably as I say where I have the the most. Uh, freedom and the most fun uh, is is where I can uh, create the personality from scratch, and I'm not having to triangulate uh, against uh, you know what uh, what has already appeared. And behind you, you've got some fantastic books and posters. There's a bird of prey there; it looks fantastic. Oh yeah, uh, you've got that awesome Kenobi poster behind you. Of course, that's had so, <laughs> so many reprints and so many re-releases. It's coming out. I think Goldstone Books are doing a hardback release of it. Uh, it's a, a Inkstone. 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 Uh, there you go. Yes, you go. Uh, available today. So inkstonebooks.com. Uh, it, it's a, uh, a a run of 500 copies, uh, and uh, they're all signed by me. They're all numbered, and they are spray-painted uh, sort of uh, an orange, like you see on the cover back there on the side. 
Got mine and, already uh, ordered. Can't wait. And yeah, inside under the uh, under the uh, the slip cover is uh, uh, an embossed uh, 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 lightsaber of Obi Wan's. Oh, sweet! That's beautiful. Obviously, the TV show wasn't the Kenobi novel, but it's kind of in that area, that p- period of time. What did you make of the series when it came out? Like, it was a couple of years ago, now, isn't it? Well, uh, you know, I, when I first saw it, I, I, I well, well, first, yeah, every time they mentioned that there would be a series or a movie or whatever, my mentions and sales would go up. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I, would, I, you know, I was happy about that. Uh, I, I, I knew they were not going to be able to do my book because uh, it was an arrival story, and we're ten years on. Um, yeah. Is uh, an older character now, um, but uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, I remember. Uh, being uh, relieved uh, and and delighted. Um, my concern always had been, uh, you know, it, 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 I I never thought that Obi Wan Kenobi should leave the planet. I thought that you know, he's in prison. He's you know he's he's got to stay here. This is his job. Yeah. And I knew the odds were that he would be departing. And uh, you know the Leia portion of it, I I saw that and I'm like. Okay, that's that's good. That's that's uh, that's the only thing he would leave for. Um, that that makes uh, that makes perfect sense. Uh, and uh, you know, as far as the actual, um, uh, you know, in 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 total, uh, you get to the end of the uh, the series, and uh, it did nothing to overwrite the book. Um, uh, you know, on my website. Uh, farawaypress.com on the Kenobi page. There's a video of Ellen McGregor talking about the novel. Also, uh, Deborah Chow, the director. Uh, you know, they they took some of the mood from the book. Uh, it's it's plain that if you see it, uh, it uh, you know there's a there's a major element that is something that we did. Uh, Qui Gon not responding to uh, to Obi Wan. That is a a choice that we uh, we made after some debate uh, in uh, in uh, the novel itself. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I'm I'm happy with it. It it uh, I think they coexist nicely. This is Charles Soule. You're listening to Fanta Tracks. What's in your immediate future that you can talk about? And even <laughs> if you can't, are you? I, I'm assuming you're a busy fellow. Okay, uh, that is uh, that I can that I can talk about. All right, book releases uh, just this week. Uh, I mentioned that Star Trek: uh, Strange New Worlds novel, The High Country, uh, that is in paperback this week. So that is uh, and that that is the first Star Trek novel with maps in it, uh, planetary maps in it. It's got uh, it's got a it's got a bunch. Uh, that is from Simon and Schuster at Gallery Books. Uh, we also have uh, oh, oh the the, Ger- the German version of it is is beautiful. It's uh, actually got um, let me grab it here. Oh, here I am falling. It actually has the map on the on the spine, oh, which is wow. really cool. Uh, it's uh, wow. They 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 get they get the best books. Beautiful, <laughs> nice, very nice. Uh, they get the best books, but uh, but yes, it will be coming out in other 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 languages, uh, 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 rather in English. Uh, it is it is out. Uh, yeah, Star Wars. Obviously, this book is out. Audiobook, ebook, uh, hardcover on April 9th. Uh, we also have uh, a book coming out. Uh, you mentioned that uh, that Star Star Wars Empire issue. Uh, well, that gets reprinted in one of the giant omnibus editions. Uh, that is uh, Star Wars: uh, uh, The uh, Legends, uh, The Old Republic Rebellion, Volume. Two. Well remembered. That's very, co- that's very complicated, <laughs> but that's what it is, uh, and that's the only story I have in that. But that's that's uh, that's uh, I think the third week of May or second week of May, and immediately after that, the week after, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, something that people have been uh, well demanding for a long time. Uh, the uh, Knights of the Old Republic uh, is uh, the reprints begin again. Uh, so it is the the Star Wars um, Legends uh, epic collection, The Old Republic, Volume One. We start back at the beginning, and uh, fresh printings of that. Uh, once again, the you know the uh, the the that came out originally in 2015, and those printings are very expensive right now. Uh, and so those coming out again, that's that's going to be delightful. Uh, that is uh, that is also in the month of May, uh, and then in June. 
the uh, the novel The New Dawn or Star Wars A New Dawn uh, comes out in a uh, trade paperback collection with a, uh, a a slightly changed cover as well for that new size that's there. Uh, and uh, and that uh, is, you know, the 10th anniversary of that book is coming up. Uh, I have uh, more news uh, that is uh, coming up soon, but uh, that is is pretty much all I can talk about at the moment. And uh, again, I've got I've got my events uh, here in the United States, uh, uh, events uh, all across Wisconsin here this week for the release of the book. Uh, and then I'll be at C2E2 in Chicago. And uh, I do hope to get to England at some point. They uh, they know where I am. Well, we'd love to see you over here. Before I let you go, <laughs> one final thing. Back in 2007, we did Celebration Europe, the first yes. Celebration Europe. And very generously, you sent me, I think it was the first 10 issues of Knots of the Old Republic. You signed them all. And oh, I sold, wow. them, sold them off for charity. So some lucky fella. Picked oh, up gosh. those ten issues, but it, it raised a nice little penny for charity. So I just want to uh, say that's, thank you. That's that's good. It, it would it would would raised even more about a year ago uh, <laughs> after after the after the uh, after the pandemic and the revenue issues went to Pluto. Uh, it was uh, <laughs> I I I I've never seen anything like that, uh, and I've been in comics for a very long time. Uh, so anyway, no, uh, glad to do it, and uh, yeah, certainly, uh, you know, it, it's 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 a uh, it's good job that it it, it went out there. Uh, you know, folks can uh, find me on uh, my website farawaypress.com. I've got uh, behind the scenes notes on most of my books, not uh, not the Living Force yet because I haven't gotten to it yet, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I will eventually, and uh, then also um, uh, uh, they'll find me on Twitter. Uh, JJM Faraway is the handle. Uh, and then I am John Jackson Miller on Instagram, uh, Threads, uh, Facebook, uh, TikTok, and wherever else. That's wonderful. Thanks so much for your time. It's a brilliant book. Really glad we got a chance to talk about it again. May the force be with you. Thank you for joining us for this special edition of Cannon Fodder. For more Star Wars podcast content, be sure to subscribe to Fan Attacks Radio on your podcatcher of choice. Subscribe to all our social media at links.fanattacks.com. Be sure to be checking out fanattacks.com daily for all your latest Star Wars news. And you can also join us live on YouTube for Good Morning Tatooine every Sunday evening at youtube.com forward slash TV. Coming up next on Fanta Tracks Radio, it's Making Tracks.